Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, my man, how you doing today? I'm all right, man. If this uh, Mother Nature would quit having Tourette's, I'd be all right. I feel like we're in a custody battle between summer and fall. Right. 80 degrees yesterday, 40 degrees today. I'm confused. Very. I mean, you know, I, I expect it now. I mean... We had, what, 70s for the majority of the time in February, 40s and 50s in March. So, you know, now that we are in April, I give up. I'm not even going to try to predict anything. Right. What's that they say? The weatherman is one of only a few jobs that you can be wrong more than 75% of the time and still keep your job. Yeah, but they're nice. they're hardly ever wrong like 75 degree or 75 percent off. They're usually pretty dead on. Like we knew it was gonna be cold today. It's just like come on now. Let's let's get a well I, I'm ready to kick winter to the curb. In their defense, they've come a long way because you know we've got Doppler now and everything, so they can predict a little bit better. But back in the day, you could either say, Hey, it's gonna be partly cloudy. You know, that was always the term for, well, it may be clear. It may be cloudy. Right. It just depends on where you live. Um, talk about somebody that can't afford to be wrong a little bit later in the show. But, um, <laughs> you know, while we're talking about right and wrong, came across this article um, that I was telling you about. 12 movies that everyone may say is the best of all time. Now, I can pick that apart just from the title. Everyone and May. I can tell you by looking at the article, I must not be a part of everyone because I certainly may not say that um, all these movies are among the best of all time. Now, there are some good ones on here, but there are some that, meh, and that's just the way I see it. So, man, yeah, because you haven't. Mad because you haven't seen them all, or it varies, and we'll go through all twelve of them because I want your opinion on them as well. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into it with the first one, Seven Samurai. Now, this one I've heard from a lot of directors that this truly was the template for all action movies. I have not seen this movie, so I can't, you know, downgrade it whatsoever. One of these days, I probably am going to have to see it. I'm not big on subtitle movies, but it's not something that I shy away from either. I just got to be in the mood. So this is not one that I would downgrade. This is the man, like, I haven't uh, seen it, so I can't judge it. Have you seen this movie? I have not, but I'm definitely writing it down to check it out. And uh, kind of seems right up my alley. Yeah, I mean, you know, action movie, I, I'm... If it was a romance movie, probably would have said no off the bat, but you know. <laughs> now, now this next one, though, I'm not going to lie to you. I've seen it. I think it's a good movie, but I don't understand the appeal to put it on one of the greatest of all time. That's the Shawshank Redemption. That is a classic movie, my friend, and it is one of the best well-directed well-directed, well-acted movies of all time. And take no nothing away from it. Well-directed. Completely well agree. Acted, but I, I mean, I can't put it up there, up there. It's a good movie, but it's not name one. one it's name not, one I'm, better that's not on this list. Well, well, let's get through the list first. But what I'm saying is, and this is one of those different people have different opinions kind of things. If I'm channel flipping, and I see this one, I may not stop at it as opposed to someone else who would. So I get it. So it's not one of mine. Um, it's not one that you would rewatch, but that doesn't make it not a great movie. Right, but they, they're talking greatest of all time. And, and that's, you know, and that's but, part of the reason why I'm going through these because it's very subjective. You really can't say anything's greatest of all time because everybody's sure going to have their own. Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, the defense restaurant. 
I'm, I'm losing the court battle. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the third one. Blade Runner. I, I thought that was a good movie. It's but, decent. I mean, but it's not the greatest of all time. It no, it's not saying greatest. It's it's on the list, one of the greatest. It's not saying it's number one. Right. And I would put it on the list. It's a classic. Well, it is a classic just by age, but um... no, I mean just in general. It's it's a it's a classic movie. It's. It's a it's a movie, especially that came out in what 81, 82. 80, 19, okay. So it's one of those movies where the movies that came after it use that as a template. I can see that, um, to some degree. Now I mean, and it was it was above its time sci fi wise. It was before its time. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like the original Star Wars, you know, before its time. True. True. Now, the next one was Vertigo, and it has been a good while since I've seen it. And this is where, this is one of those movies that really separates uh, age groups. Uh, because us of a certain age, we are familiar with Hitchcock. We are familiar with the formula, the suspense, and it's not. It's it's one of those movies that I think belongs on the list. But at the same time someone younger than us might not see it or understand it because it wasn't ADD enough for the new generation. True. I also agree. It, it it has its place on this list. What made these types of movies phenomenal is what you did not see is what mm -hmm. scares you. Right. I mean, you, you never see most likely a drop of blood. You never actually see a blade slide across skin. It's what you don't see that's frightening. And that because your mind a, plays tricks on you. That was a formula for most yes. every Hitchcock movie, too. Yes. Um, next up on the list, 12 Angry Men. Now this love this movie. Men Both I, I've seen it, but it has been so, so long since I've seen it. Love and this I movie, think, and I love both projections because they remade it like in the nineties. Yeah, um, I don't think I ever saw. I've the seen remake. both. And let me tell you why I appreciate this movie so much. Even though I haven't seen it in a while, it still left an impression. You know, yes, just just by virtue of the people in the room, the personalities. Uh, that that was some good acting. It was, yeah. But I will have to check out that remake one day. Um, next up on the list is Saving Private Ryan, and I know there could have been a lot of uh, uh, World War movies that were on the list. This one made that list. It was pretty impactful, and it, it, it wasn't a uh, blood and gore fest. It wasn't something like a full metal jacket or an apocalypse now. Whoa, but there whoa, was, whoa, whoa, no, there, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean it wasn't a blood and gore fest? Well, no. The I'm, first I'm, 30 minutes was retarded. Well, yes. Th that was they're true storming war. the beach. That, that, that's, that's true war. That, that's the way that was. But I'm talking about something like a full metal jacket where somebody just, you know, blows themselves away in a room. Full metal jacket was not blood and gore. It was the part that I'm talking about. I don't know. You know the dude shoots himself in the head because yeah. he was crazy. Right. But in this movie, in Saving Private Ryan, the first 30 minutes, you see exploded decapitated limbs and all sorts of shit people yes, with their insides yes, hanging do, out and... where i'm going with it is that one you needed to see it because that was a representation of the war if you take the scene in full metal jacket and you don't show it just like you were talking about the hitchcock movie i think it would have got its point across just as much 
as if you had showed it. I think with Saving Private Ryan, it comes across better showing it than as opposed to not showing it because that was Spielberg's point to get across to everybody. This is war. This is brutal. Well, and I think that Full Metal Jacket, um, that part needed, I mean, it it didn't need to be changed uh, because of what led up to said events. And that could be true. Yeah, that could be true, but. And on this, this is a good movie. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it belongs on this list. Hmm. It, it is not my favorite military movie, war movie. It's one of, it's good. It's cinematically yeah. appeasing, but it is it is not an all-time great. It's a great story. It's a great premise. Now, I might be showing my age, but if I'm going to look for a great war movie, I liked Apocalypse Now better. True. However, that's not a real war. That's true. That was the war of so, the mind. <laughs> right. Yeah, he had already gone crazy. But yeah, that's another story. I mean, so I could see why this is on the list, but I pro it probably wouldn't crack it if you had to tell me to rate my 10 favorite movies. Yeah. And also on here is um, 2001, A Space Odyssey. <sighs> Never seen it. I I I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen it. And I don't get the appeal. And I'm all about that sci-fi. I'm all about all that. But there's too many um, there's too many long scenes in this movie where nothing happens. Literally. And it, it, you know, maybe if I watch it now I'll probably pick up on things more. Maybe I was bored and super bored both times I tried to watch it back in the day. But it just seemed like there was something missing or dragging along in this movie. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, the visuals were stunning. And, and Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick, excuse me, he, he, he was a, a master, you know, when it came to putting a story across. And I give him all the credit in the world. But like you were saving Private Ryan, this one with me, it, it doesn't do it for me. I'm gonna be honest; it's 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 not on my list because I never had a desire to see it. It just never intrigued me. Like even the, it just never. It's kind of like Ten Thousand Leagues Under the Sea or whatever. Just something I just wasn't into. Now here's one that uh, it's probably more up the alley of the younger people. Uh, it, it comes. It's it's good for us too, but Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. Um, yeah, I mean it's a good fantasy movie. If I really sat down and thought thought about it, maybe I could think of a fantasy movie that I like better. There were some great visuals with this, great storytelling with this. I don't know if I would say that it's should be on this list of the greatest of all time. I'd agree. It's visually stunning. Um, you know, I'm a fan of the series, you know, obviously the books, mm -hmm. but, you know, I would rank this in the same category as Avatar or any of the Marvel movies, you know, that we've seen. So, I mean, it's not, it's not the best. It's not the worst, but, you know, it's very... Very entertaining. Yeah, very entertaining is a good way to put should, it. Not necessarily, with all these other movies that are on this list, it should not be next to them, side by side. Truth. And Gone with the Wind. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. It has been a good, good, I'm going to say... I'm giving myself away here, probably 30 some odd years since I've seen this movie. Well, frankly, um, my dear Rick, I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue that it shouldn't be on the list. If if you told me, hey, Rick, 
give me your top 10. It probably wouldn't be on mine. But from what I do remember, it, it was a good sweeping epic. But, now, we're talking personal preference, so it probably would not be on my list either. However, mm -hmm. just being a film, mm -hmm. a movie that has standed the test of time, yes, it should it should be on this list. Yeah. And same with the next two. <laughs> oh, speaking of, the next one is Casablanca. And it's not a bad movie. It, it, Everything that you said about Gone with the Wind, we can say about Casablanca. Same, yes. And The Godfather. Hands down, he should be on this list, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree slightly. I was all about The Godfather Part 2. To me, that one was better. Not it, by it's much. A but it's a continuing story. Yeah. It's not really a part two. Even yeah. though there's three Godfathers, they're really not sequels. I would like... It's kind of like the Star Wars trilogy. Empire Strikes Back is not the sequel to Star Wars. It's the continuation of the storyline. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Uh, which which the, makes... The, the, the original Godfather was more of um, Vito's story. Mm -hmm. And Godfather 2 is more of Michael's story. Same with 3, right? It was yeah. when Michael was older. Michael was much uh, older, yeah. Uh, but this movie is the standard that all other mob movies that came after it held their... That is true. You know, you, which is why with, it needs to be the on Godfather, the list. Godfather, you wouldn't have Goodfellas. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have, have Sopranos. You yeah. wouldn't have none of that. Yeah, so... In that, I can see that this is on that list for a reason. And make no mistake about it, it is a damn good movie. If if I only had two and a half hours, three hours to kill, and you said, here, here's the Godfather movies, I would probably put two in and watch it just because. You'd only be able probably to see most of one movie at that time frame. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Those were long movies. I'm pretty sure uh, I've seen it on Cinemax or Showtime or one of them. Mm -hmm. a few months ago and they played all of them as one giant movie and i think it was a oh, nine that took hour all day. block yeah it was a nine hour block yeah so uh, yeah it, it, yeah that's one of those movies that it, like, just like the lord of the rings series if if you're going to sit down and watch the entire thing oh and don't be like my wife she has the extended editions you mm -mm. are going to be there all day oh yeah because then you have to add the Hobbit series in with it because it all ties in. So Yeah, yeah. You're there for a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, we we sat down, what was it, the week before last? Uh, last Saturday. It started Friday and ended on Sunday because she made the mistake of asking me, um, what order should you watch the X-Men movies? Oh, well, let me tell you, dear. <laughs> so we went through all the X-Men movies, the uh, first class movies, the Wolverine movies in order though so yeah that took all weekend so that's fun time yeah yeah right up until you get to Logan and then you have to explain well he's coming back in Deadpool because Deadpool 3 takes place before Logan well then also it's a different timeline well supposedly Deadpool is going to Straighten out the timeline. Right, which is gonna start Secret Wars. Yeah. So um But now but now I'm geeking out, so let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get to Deadpool sooner or later. Citizen yeah. Kane. Now I've heard a whole lot about this movie. This is one of those movies I've never seen. So uh I've got nothing. Yeah, I'm with you. Never seen it, heard it's a classic. You know, it 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 probably is on Turner Classic movies. You know, uh, on any given Sunday afternoon, never watched it. All right. So before we go to our next topic, I want to ask you guys that are watching this on YouTube or uh, if you're uh, able to stream us somewhere and you can leave comments, please do so. If you can't, leave us a comment on our email at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. 
I want to know, and you don't have to list 10 or 12 movies. Just tell me what your favorite movie of all time is. We want to hear from you. All right, show. Yes, sir. Fun stuff to the stuff that makes you just scratch your head and say, what the hell was he thinking? You know, I finally realized what the P is for in P Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going with that. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't call him Puff Daddy for no reason. Yeah. Um, so I think it broke the day of or the day before our last podcast. So we really didn't talk too much about it. And, and please understand, audience, if I say Sean, it's because his name is Sean Combs. He came out the womb, Sean. His mama called him Sean, so I'm going to call him Sean. Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, whatever. Um, the FBI, in case you guys are, you know, behind, uh, and Homeland Security raided his residences stateside, plural. Now, here's the thing. If you're raided by the FBI and Homeland Security, there's a problem. That means that you have done something that uh, you cannot uh, just uh, shake off. And you don't have the type of money to get yourself out of said thing. And if I'm correct, has has he been, he hasn't been charged with anything officially yet, has he? No, just accused. Okay. Because the uh, raids were tied that, to sex trafficking. And not necessarily, okay. not necessarily accused in a court of law either. Right. Like, I don't know if there's actually any charges out there. Yeah, so... So we want to tread very carefully when we talk about uh, what we want to talk about. I'm, here's what I'm going to say, uh, and I'm going old school with this. I didn't know anything about any drug trafficking, but there's been a lot of stuff, if you look on social media, about uh, him being tied to children um sex stuff and people getting ready to come out with stuff now what's that old adage if one person says it it may not be true if a few people say it it might be a rumor but when lots of people say it there might be some truth somewhere in there so i'm not saying he did anything but I am going to say there's got to be some truth in whatever he is or is about to be accused of. And if it's anything like these allegations that they've been talking about, it's not something that it's not like you walked on stage and slapped another celebrity. You can't come back from this. This is going to be brutal. R. Kelly. Yeah, and, and if I'm correct, Kel's got 31 years. So, and, and his was uh, also, his was trafficking related, wasn't it? Underage trafficking? I don't think trafficking was the key, because trafficking means you're selling the kids or the person or other. Yeah, he that's more just, like that Epstein level he was, stuff. He was more of a pedophile. Yeah. Uh which still isn't right. But. Right. It's nowhere near right. I mean. I was trying to look up his actual charges. Because I hadn't heard anything of the sex trafficking. And, uh, what I consider sex, sex trafficking. Unless he's talking about, and I guess it could, you know, there are, and I'm not going to say the names of the celebrities that were passed around mm -hmm. at parties type of thing. So I guess if that was the key, maybe he was selling them in that aspect. 
one thing that somebody mentioned that uh, it, it, it could make a lot of sense in this particular case. When people tend to get rich and or powerful, that power tends to go to their heads and they tend to believe that they are above recourse, so to speak. They can get away with things that they may not have thought about if they weren't of a certain status. Because remember, how many years back was it that he was dating Jennifer Lopez and they had the uh, club incident involving guns and such and such? Mm -hmm. um, all that got swept under the rug magically. But this is a whole different animal here. And like I said earlier, if Homeland Security gets involved, they aren't trying to have you pay a fine. They are not trying to just put you in jail. There is a bigger route to the problem that they are trying to get assessed and uh, eliminate. We are talking about people that are above the sheriff's department, above the FBI even. So this is something a lot bigger than we can perceive right now. And with the lack of information in the press, that's one thing. I, I believe in the next few days, more is going to come out and it's not going to be a good look for Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Sean Combs. Regardless of nothing came out, he's not going to recover from this. Just being accused. But, yeah. you know, we have topics coming up in the future. We just haven't set actual times. And I've, I've explained my thoughts on this overall process. But just to dabble into it a little bit, Diddy is nothing but a pawn in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. He is the proverbial fall guy. Do we actually think Epstein was running the show? I'm saying no. No. There is an upper echelon of individuals on this earth that are pulling the puppet strings of all of these Hollywood actors musicians people you know false prophets i.e joel olstein uh you know those types of things that you know one day when we actually have this conversation it'll be a fun one but i, yeah, I think we, we he's, don't talk one day about million dollar joel it, it's it's fall it, it, it it's it, he's the fall guy and yeah uh -huh. you know i think that the What's the word I'm looking for? Um, not hazing, but the kind of like what you do when you pledge a fraternity, you know, the yeah. stuff that you have to go through to be in that group. Mm -hmm. um, that's what these individuals, these victims are, uh, are going through because they were put through that stuff to attain what they have now I, I like the way you put that and with the uh the way society is now and things just don't get overlooked as they should not be um we're gonna see more and more of the people that we never thought would do something like this i.e bill cosby um you know get accused and convicted um yeah but i, I do like think the there are some underlying that. underlying ish you know people there are other people that are in charge i like the way you put that because i know i said that you know it's going to come down hard on him there's going to be other names that are going to pop up in this oh yeah but he's gonna he's the proverbial fall guy just like r kelly just like weinstein or epstein
Both. And yeah. Weinstein both too. Yeah. <laughs> uh it the the dude from uh Nickelodeon. Yeah. Dan Dan Snyder. These these are the fall guys. These are not the ultimate the buck stops here, people. There are yeah, people because above in them. In order for something to happen, others have to help make it happen. So Yes. And overlook it. Yes. And those types of things. So yeah. Yeah. So you know, we are going to we're going to dive back into this story as it unfolds for sure. Uh, Most F. But I want to go out on a different note before we get out of here. I want to talk about the NFL because, you know, we are all about the National Football League. Mm -hmm. Owners meeting happened, you know, yay, all right, whatever. Two things that I want your opinion about. The all right. new kickoff and the banning of the hip drop tackle. Okay. I'll start with the kickoff first. Okay. I like it. I, I think it's a good change uh, because technically the last few years, the kickoff has just been a wasted down. Nobody returns kicks anymore. They let the ball fly over their head. So this is going to allow us to see some returns, you know, get excited. Like as Chiefs fans, we used to see Dante Hall do his thing. You know, if you're a Bears fan, Hester did his thing. Um, you know, there are some, those are fun plays that have been missing from the game uh, in the last, you know, decade or so. So I think it's good. Um, it's not really hard to follow. It's it's going to, it eliminates the, the 50 yard collisions that the blockers and gunners do. So it's going to be more safe, kind of like, I mean, it's exactly what the UF, the UFL does. The XFL did it last year. Um, it's, it's exact same principle. Uh, and I, I, I think it's, I think it's going to be good. I think we're going to enjoy it once we get accustomed to it as fans and see it and understand it, we're going to see some big plays and it's going to be fun to watch. Okay. Uh, the hip drop tackle. <clears throat> I am also okay with this change. However, um, I don't see how I like, I'm okay with the decision to ban it. Okay. They're not going to, the, from what I understand, teams aren't going to get flagged. The players are going to get fined. So there's not going to be a bunch of personal fouls, uh, hip drop tackle, blah, 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 15 yard. They're not going to, that's not going to change a game. The players that actually do it will be fined. If they do it multiple times, they will be suspended, so forth and so on. I'm okay with that. It what it does is it makes the defense uh, a defensive player uh, more um, what sort of look for uh, difficult to do their job, and it's actually going to make them go for knees mm -hmm. versus anything else. Mm -hmm. That's where I was going, and and we're going to see probably more injuries to high profile players because it's the only way that these defensive guys can tackle. I cannot see anybody, you know, actually stopping uh, Henry, uh, you know, in, in a hole and, and, and not be able to wrap up and, and drop your weight. I mean, that's, that's how we all were tackled. Yeah. They're still able to do that, but they have to, they can't, I say they can do it and they can't do it. I mean, physics, it's hard to do, but they, what, what's, what, they're, what they're trying to ban is the actual, basically becoming an anchor. So I grab you around the waist. I, and instead of me trying to pull you down or, you know, put my foot in the ground and pick you up and, and, and turn you like we would in a wrestling match or something of that nature, we're going completely limp and we're turning while falling on your legs. Yes. And and that's what, and it's a very dangerous tackle. I mean, there are players that have been hit with this that have not come back for, like Tony Pollard is a great example. Hip drop tackled a year before last, this past year, he wasn't the same player. Yeah. Um, See, uh, I didn't even realize Tony Pollard was a victim to that. I remember, yeah. what was it, Mark Andrews from the Ravens? Yeah, that was this year. Yeah. Uh, but year before last, when we beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl, 
that Jaguars game, Patrick Mahomes was hip dropped. And it landed, he ended up with a high ankle sprain. You know, he, th you know, thank God it wasn't lower on his leg because it could have broke his ankle. And he may not, you know, he may not. We definitely wouldn't have the two rings that we have now uh, back to back. So I'm okay with it. I understand as a diehard uh, football fan, uh, the hesitancy to accept it. But, you know, it's no different than the horse collar tackle, man. I mean, things were done. They changed it. Defenses will adjust. You're going to see a lot more long runs this year, but defenses will catch up. And I think in the long run, it'll be more safe. But they're going to have to do something with those knee shots because people will be diving for knees. And I was going to say that. There are going yeah. to be some knee shots. We are going to see a lot more knee injuries. And Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, so don't be mad at me. In week four, when Max Crosby comes in and hits Mahomes in the knee and changes y'all season. The only way that he would need to do that would be if Patrick Mahomes is running down the sideline. If he's in the pocket and he goes for his knees, I will personally hire the hitman to take Crosby out. <laughs> All right, y'all. On that note, um, I got to make a phone call to Max. We got to change our plans. Uh, but we will be back next week. Same great time, same great channel. Leave us a like, share, subscribe if you're on YouTube. Appreciate y'all. Big show. Take us on out of here. Um, You know, I, I say this every week. Uh, You know, tell the person that you love, the people you love, you love them because tomorrow isn't promised. Um, I say this this week um, more. Um, I stress it more this week. Um lost a a a martial arts person in the world and uh, that i've known for 30 years haven't talked to her in many years because her husband passed away uh karen green she was involved in a one or in an automobile accident in tulsa on sunday lost her life you know in an accident so you never know when your cards are going to be pulled so be sure be kind to everyone love everybody and please you know Take make every day like it's your last day. Stay well, blessed. Said, my friend. See y'all next said. week. Y'all take care. Max, Max, don't <laughs> go for the knee. <laughs>